In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this bed. It's really easy to make. It requires just basic woodworking techniques and only a few tools. So almost anybody at any skill level could make this. And we actually just only used uh, pine from like a home improvement store. So uh, the materials really are not very expensive and pretty easy to work with. So let's get started. So we're going to start by cutting all of our boards to length. Now I'm going to use a miter saw for this. The one I'm using is a job site saw. It takes a little bit longer to get cut set up because the length of the board and I don't have anything really to support the long pieces. So um, it's not ideal, but uh, it works. And so we're going to cut them all to length and then we're going to go and we're going to sand. Now the reason we're going to sand, one reason is uh, you want to sand before you put finish on. But because we're working with basically construction lumber, um, some of it came pre-printed with stuff from the sawmill. And we need to get all that off and just get everything nice and smooth. So I'm going to sand everything down um, and then the next step will actually be to stain because we need to, these are all going to have some different variations of color. Uh, just that's the look I wanted to go for. So uh, I got to stain it before I assemble it. So we're going to get started sanding and go from there. So I've got everything sanded now. Um, I've made one of these before for my older son. Uh, this one's not going to be quite the same, but it's going to be similar. And uh, what I did for finish is I used three different colors of stain. They're all different shades of gray. Um, this is called carbon gray. I'm also going to use this sun bleached. It's not really a gray. It's kind of a, it almost just looks like a weathered uh, board. And then kind of a medium color gray, weathered gray right here. I'm going to use those three colors and uh, I'm going to do the the main part of the frame and the main part of the headboard all in the same color as well as the legs and then do the slats across the headboard just in a random like just alternate these or you just kind of mix up the colors a little bit do one board one color one board the next and um, go with that so um, my son wanted the darkest gray to be the primary color for the whole thing, so that's what we're going with here. So that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, so I have everything stained. The next step, I'm going to put a clear coat on right now. Um, the only reason I'm doing this now as opposed to when it's all assembled is I just think it's going to be easier to clear coat everything as individual pieces. Um, when it's all put together it's going to be hard I don't have a lot of room to set things up uh, so I just think it'll be easier to do it now so typically I would do you know my clear coat at the end but um, this is a little bit different so what I'm using for this is I'm gonna use a polycrylic made by Minwax and the reason I chose this is one it doesn't yellow so sometimes with polyurethanes they'll as you know over time it'll it'll yellow a little bit and I've used this before and I just I really like the finish it produces so um, it seems very durable it goes on clear so that's why I chose it so I'm gonna get started doing that and then we'll be ready for assembly so I just wanted to jump in here real quick and tell you about something I'm really excited about I've mentioned it in a previous video but I am going to be announcing a really new cool feature that we're going to build into uh, my followers and it's, I think it's going to provide a lot of value to aspiring woodworkers and hobbyists so I'm not quite ready to announce it yet it is coming though in the next few weeks so you're going to want to hit that subscribe button because I'm sure that most of my subscribers are going to love this if you like some of the stuff that I show in my videos or if you're just interested in woodworking and, and the hobby and of woodworking and crafting and things like that, 
uh, you're going to get some value out of what I'm going to announce. So make sure that you hit that subscribe and stay tuned to what's coming out in the next few couple weeks. And we'll get back to the build. So for assembly, we're just going to use a, a pocket hole jig. And so what I need to start with is I'm going to start with the ends of the, what we're going to call the base. So we're going to build a frame that's going to go, that the mattress is going to set on. And we're going to do the ends of both pieces of the end boards <clears throat> pocket hold in. So essentially it'll look, it'll, it'll join together like this with pocket hole screws holding it in together. Uh, I've done this before and it, the same type of bed, just a little bit different design. It worked well, so we're going to use it again. That bed. So the bed that I did before, it's been in use for several years now with zero issues at all. So I'm confident that it'll be fine. And then these pieces here are all going to be headboard slats. And they're going to run horizontal. I'll put pocket holes on the ends of each one. And they will pocket hole into these, into these 2x4s right here. These 2x4s will serve as like the, the post each end of the headboard and they'll just butt in back here and uh, it'll be pocket hold in the back and then we'll have a piece that caps the top of it so it looks nice you can set stuff on top of it and uh, works quite well so that's what we're working on now uh, we'll drill holes in in the ends of all those boards and then we will begin assembly For the legs at the foot of the bed, it's just going to be two 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 by fours. They're going to be butted together in, in like an L shape. And so I needed to draw a few pocket holes for that as well. So we're going to drill those out, and then we're going to start assembly. Now, typically, when you screw pocket hole screws in, you really should clamp the boards together so they do not move. I actually do not have a clamp that's long enough to clamp this. Uh, I did have some, but I left them in my shop in Ohio and when I moved, I didn't bring all my clamps. So I had to make sure I held it really tight when I was screwing it in. And I'll be honest, there were a few times where the first screw that went in on the board, the board shifted a little bit. I had to back that screw out and I started with the other screw so that I wasn't going into the same hole over and over again. Uh, it's not ideal. I highly recommend if you can clamp it, you should clamp it. They do make special clamps that um, are made to use with pocket holes. However, the one I have will not open wide enough to accept a two by four as the board you're joining to. And I'm using a two by four there on the bottom so it just wasn't working. So I just had to be extra careful and hold it in place with my hands. Next, I went to the table saw 
I took a one by four and I cut two strips out of it. And those two strips uh, are gonna be used as basically a mattress support. We're gonna screw this to the side of the bed frame. And then on top of these pieces, we're gonna have a piece of plywood that's just gonna support the mattress. We aren't using a box spring. I'm, I didn't buy any slats to go across. It's just purely a frame on the inside of the bed frame. And because pine tends to split a little bit easier, I was a little worried about these screws. Uh, so I just pre-drilled some holes, just to guide holes, so that it was less likely to split. Uh, ideally, I also would have countersunk these, but like my clamps, my countersink bit, I discovered I actually left at my old shop in Ohio as well. So I didn't have a countersink bit, so I just had to be a little bit extra careful once the screw hit the wood to make sure I didn't split everything. Everything worked out good, and so we drilled these, and then we're just going to screw them in place. Next, we're going to just screw on the legs. Now, I used a longer screw, like a two and a half inch screw, and I made sure I sunk them pretty good. I really wanted it down in there, and I put one screw for these end ones. I put one screw on the short side and two on the long side, and I made sure I butted it up against the bottom of that piece of pine that we put inside the frame. And that just serves to make sure that every one of my legs are the same height off the bottom so that my, my bed sets correctly. So that was kind of an important step. So we're going to screw all these in, uh, put the other ones at the other end. I made sure that the one end had the, the double leg that, that's like an L-shaped leg. The other end didn't. And then I also wanted to put one in the middle of the bed just to provide a little bit extra support. I was just a little worried about the middle not having good support. And so I thought this was the best way to do it. And it seems very sturdy. I sat on the bed, no problem. So I felt pretty good about it after I tested it out. Now for the last cut that needs made, it's just the big piece of plywood that goes on underneath where the mattress is gonna set and just supports the mattress. So I made a few marks and then I connected them with a straight edge, which my straight edge was a two by four. And then I just hand cut them. I, you know, I wanted to stay close to the line, but to actually use a table saw and try to muscle a big sheet of plywood by myself on a table saw just wasn't going to happen. And this saw did a great job. I, I, it cuts very nice, uh, especially for plywood. And so I was confident that I could make a good cut that would definitely be usable for what I wanted to do. So we made the cut both ways and checked to make sure that it fits. So the last thing I need to do is I need to screw the side rail to the leg of the headboard. Um, so I'm gonna do that in, when I get it in place inside. This, this is going to my son's bedroom. So I'm gonna do that when I get it in place there. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'll probably just throw a few screws down through the this plywood top uh, mattress support is what we're using this for and I'm just gonna screw it down to that piece of one by two that's inside of here and that will just help stabilize it so it won't move quite as much um, it's not really a structural thing it's just more of a I don't want it to you know bounce because it isn't it's sitting quite flat um, something may be warped a little bit or something other than that, and this is done, so uh, it turned out pretty good, and I think my son will like it. So thanks for watching. Uh, you can see it serves its purpose. My son likes it, so that is a big part of it. Now, I did change the design up a little bit. Um, I had made another one, and it's in this room, and I'll show you here. I made this bed here for my, my third child. And he wanted one of those beds that looked like it was floating. So this bed actually looks like it's floating if there wasn't stuff underneath it. And there's also light, LED lights underneath it that he stopped using. Um, so I asked my son who I built this for, the, the one we did in this video, and he said he didn't care about any of that stuff. And that stuff took a little bit longer to do and was a little bit more complicated to figure out how the legs would go on because of the floating look to it. You have to set the legs back from the edge, but if you set them back too far, the bed could possibly tip. So 
Uh, I didn't really want to get into that in, in this build, so if you want to do that, you're going to have to figure that out on your own. But um, I will say that most of the build is similar. It's just the legs are a little bit different. The other thing I did that is different on this one is on the first one, I used 2x4s as the bed frame that goes around the mattress. And I felt like it wasn't quite enough. Um, so on, on the new one that we did in this video, I used 2x6s and I like the look a lot better. It just, it, it fills it out nicer. It looks more like a more traditional bed frame instead of just a bed that's sitting on top of a platform. So those are just a few of the differences. Other than that, uh, this one just sits like maybe two inches higher than the other one, but they're basically identical other than that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Like I mentioned before, you're not going to want to miss what's coming. And check out these videos up here on the screen. I am sure there's going to be something in there you like and you can get some good value out of if you haven't seen it already. And aside from that, we'll just catch you next time.